Today, we're going to be talking about the best, in my opinion, quarterback and wide receiver duo in the league. Yes, you may consider Diggs and Allen to be the best, or maybe even Hurts and AJ Brown. Hell, you could even throw Mahomes and Kelsey in the combo because of how much Kelsey lines up at the X. Regardless, I think the duo out of Cincy gets the pick for me, even with it just being a little over a year and a half of them playing together. And I'll tell you why. Cue the music. Before Joe Burrow was winning the NCAA championship in 2019 or finishing runner-up in the last year's Super Bowl, he was a small-town prospect out of Ames, Iowa, born to parents Robin and Jim Burrow. The Burrow family was no stranger to athletics as his father, uncle, brothers, and both grandparents had ties to sports at a college level or higher. Burrow went on to attend Athens High School in the Plains, Ohio from 2011 to 14. He led the program to three consecutive playoff appearances in addition to seven playoff victories over the course of his high school career. Throw in 11,416 yards with 157 passing touchdowns, and you'll understand why he was awarded the state's Mr. Football Award and a Gatorade Player of the Year as a senior in 2014. And on May 27th of that same year, he committed to his dream college and state school, Ohio State University. He went on to redshirt his first year in 2015, and for the next two years, Burrow played as a backup to starter JT Barrett and played in 10 or so games when given the opportunity. As Barrett exited the program, Burrow soon came to the realization that Dwayne Haskins would win the starting job over him, so he decided to transfer on May 20th, 2018 to LSU or Louisiana State University. On the other hand, we got Jamar Chase, who, before shattering expectations and records alike in his rookie showcase, was just a kid born in Harvey, Louisiana, raised to father and mother Jimmy and Tolia Chase. Jamar was a four-star prospect from Archbishop Rummel High School thanks to his career numbers of 2,152 yards on 115 catches and 30 touchdowns. Chase had a notably chaotic recruiting process, changing commitments from Kansas, then to TCU, and finally to Florida, something that drove his father, Jimmy, crazy. If it were up to Jimmy, he would have sent his son to the welcoming arms of LSU who desperately wanted the flashy receiver. The biggest allure to LSU for the Chase family was its one hour distance from their family home to the university's campus. After a trip to Jamar's family home consisting of the entire coaching staff led by Ed Ogeron, he would quickly again change his commitment to another program. This time, maybe not what you expected, to Auburn. Jamar's father recounts this moment as an act of defiance from his son because he knew it was the only place that he didn't want him to go. In the time thereafter, Jamar went on to shoot up the high school rankings as his scouting camps were beginning to show large returns. Chase's mom, Talia, recounts this short stint in their lives as quite tense, as arguments became more frequent as each party refused to compromise. Just to interject for a moment, I'm glad the parents elected to give Jamar the choice of school he desired regardless of how it made his father feel. As the mother mentions in this article, they knew if they didn't let Jamar make his own decisions, he would grow to resent them, a common theme that can be spread around a lot of parental situations. But back to the topic at hand, Jamar finally told his dad what was at the heart of his refusal to go to LSU. Les Miles trying to convert the soon-to-be superstar receiver to cornerback due to his perceived lack of explosive speed along the likes of OBJ or Jarvis Landry. In his senior season at Rummel, even after a physical exam revealed a small hole in his heart, he elected to play as he led the team to the state playoffs with 1,011 yards, tailed thanks to his 61 catches and 15 touchdowns. He would only drop a single pass that season. Even though Les Miles was fired from LSU two years prior to Jamar's graduation, he had yet to change his commitment. Even so, his father had resigned from trying to push Jamar down a certain path, realizing his son had grown into a responsible, adult capable of making his own decision. And as February of 2018 rolled around, it came time for Jamar to sign his commitment papers and choose the program that he would take his talents to for his collegiate tenure. He sat at a long white table in a small room surrounded by local media, school representatives, friends, and family. And as he reached to place the hat on his head, which acted as an acceptance of responsibility to himself and to his family, he pulled out, as you could probably guess, 
a purple cap with bold yellow lettering on it with the letters LSU. His father remembers asking Jamar why he ended up flipping to LSU after refusing to commit there for years, and he just shrugged and suggested that it was a gut feeling. Celebration was afoot, and even though the star duo wouldn't find the ultimate success until a year later, both years of their college career proved formidable. Let's talk about it. While Burrow and Chase arrived in Louisiana State in 2018, they still had a favorable year, albeit not holding a candle to the one they'd have together in 2019. Instead, Burrow and Chase led the top 25 ranked Tigers to a 10-3 record, including a win over UCF in the Fiesta Bowl. Burrow's numbers in his year one stint with LSU came out to 2,894 yards in the air, 16 touchdowns, and 5 interceptions. Tack on 7 rushing touchdowns to that total as well. For Chase, he finished his true freshman season with 23 receptions for 313 yards and 3 touchdowns. Other notable games from the pair include the unforgettable 74-72 defeat at the hands of Texas A&M, a 36-16 win over the number 7 ranked Georgia, and a brutal 29-0 loss to Alabama that served as a staunch reminder that they weren't quite ready to win it all, yet. As 2019 rolled around, LSU was a bubbling team in the SEC, but the college football world was nowhere near prepared for the tear this Ed Ogeron-led team was about to go on. In their first matchup, the pair went up against Georgia Southern as the Tigers defeated them by an incredible 52 points. Burrow had an efficient 278 yards on a 85.2% completion rate with five touchdowns, one being to chase as he racked up two receptions on 21 yards. The duo followed that performance up on the road against 9th ranked Texas as Burrow tallied 471 yards, 4 touchdowns, and 1 interception in the 45-38 win. This was the week Chase jumped on the scene as well, albeit alongside another star you've likely heard of, Justin Jefferson, who racked up 163 yards and 3 touchdowns in the bout, but for Jamar, he put up 147 yards on his 8 catches in the victory. Now. Teams are beginning to realize LSU is a real threat, but by that time, it was just too late. In the next six matchups, the Tigers defeated each of their opponents by an average of 25.8 points per game, bringing them to an 8-0 record as their rematch against Alabama neared. At the time, LSU and Bama were ranked 1-2 respectively, but regardless of ranking, everyone knew this game would be a dogfight, Burrow and Chase included. In the 46-41, five-point victory, Burrow maintained his excellence through the matchup as he put up a virtuoso performance of 31 of 39 for 393 yards and three touchdowns. Chase would also choose the perfect time to have likely his best game of the season after he dropped 140 yards on six catches in the touchdown against the Crimson Tide. No other team came even remotely close to taking down the White Hot Tigers thereafter including their postseason games against Georgia, Oklahoma, and the college football championship versus last year's winners, Clemson. And again, the Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase combination proved to be too lethal for even the best defenses to stop. Jamar was responsible for 221 of Burrow's 463 yards, along with two of his five TDs. Additionally, Burrow threw for no interceptions in the bout, leading to the team's 42-25 championship victory over the other Tigers, that being Clemson. Burrow finished the season with totals of 60 TDs, 5,671 yards passing, and an average passer rating of 202. All those numbers were either school records or NCAA ones, but most have been tied or succeeded by now. To wrap up this section, just know that an offense led by Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase likely culminated in the greatest force college football has ever seen, as reported by several notable sports writers. And with Burrow and Jefferson exiting the program at the pinnacle of the college football world, Chase had an intriguing dilemma he would have to deal with for his junior showcase, which we'll begin to touch on in our next segment. Burrow faced a plethora of doubts in his own regard after being selected number one overall in the 2020 NFL Draft. However, I wanted to begin this section on the topic of Chase's controversial decision to forego his junior season in favor of readying himself for next year's draft. 
This type of thing has become increasingly more commonplace as we see prominent stars in college football sit out of bowl games and whatnot in order to preserve their draft stock. However, this situation represents one of the more extreme versions of that scenario, as Jamar chose to sit out the 2020 football season, not due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but reportedly rather because his agents convinced him to preserve his health and thus his draft stock for the 2021 NFL Draft. This decision was not a popular one to say the least, with some of the angry mob being disappointed LSU fans and others worried about what type of precedent this sets for other big names of college football. Although, with the knowledge that he'd be a top pick regardless of the happenings in 2020, Jamar doesn't regret the decision he made. Chase's father notes that he was the last to know his son's decision to opt out, which I thought was interesting tidbit because I just adore his parents' commitment to letting him make his own decisions. Alright, moving on to Joe Cool's rookie showcase, sporting a different type of tiger on this element. After coming off a record shattering year in 2019 to 20, Burrow was a mortal lock for the first overall selection to his hometown team, Cincinnati Bengals, who had just finished with an abysmal 2 and 14 record the year before. After the prophecy came to fruition, reality hit hard, as Burrow's rookie showcase would be filled with a lot of trial and error, losing, and other struggles, along with a few bright spots which I'll also be mentioning. Burrow was the only rookie quarterback in a stout quarterback class consisting of Herbert and Tua to start come NFL's week one for the 2020-21 season, while getting his first NFL touchdown via the ground game thanks to his 46 rushing yards on the day. Additionally, Burrow threw for 193 passing yards and an interception in the 16-13 loss to the Los Angeles Chargers. For the time being, critics got their heyday denouncing Burrow's potential thanks to his early struggles. This continued into week two of Burrow's rookie season as he went up against the Cleveland Browns, where Burrow would rack up an insurmountable NFL rookie record 61 pass attempts, en route to completing 37 of them for 316 yards and three touchdowns in the 35-30 loss. It wasn't until week four that Burrow would receive his first win in the big leagues in a 33-25 bout that gave Burrow another record, this one being the first rookie quarterback to throw for 300 or more yards for three consecutive games. Other notable events from Joe Cool Season 1 consisted of being the first rookie to pass for at least 400 yards, three passing TDs, and a rushing TD in a single game, as well as having the most completed passes through their first eight games out of any rookie quarterback in history. This is when things would come crashing down for the young star, however, because during his week 11 matchup versus the Washington football team, Burrow took a nasty hit resulting in an ACL and an MCL tear, along with damage to his PCL and his meniscus. For Bengals faithful, this signified another souring end to a season that the Bengals fan had become all too accustomed to. Only saving graces belong to the fact that the Bengals' horrid win-loss record secured them the fifth overall pick, along with the opportunity of reuniting former teammate Jamar Chase with his quarterback one at LSU, which, as you can guess, would come to fruition in the 2021 NFL Draft, which takes us into our next section. Coming into the 2021-22 season, expectations for the Bengals team were relatively low considering their depravity since the departure of the middling Andy Dalton, especially with the surrounding narrative of Jamar's inconsistent catch rate with a startling amount of drops in the preseason. However, the first player to wear number one for the Bengals hit the ground running in his very first matchup against the Minnesota Vikings and former LSU teammate Justin Jefferson wherein Burrow would throw for 261 yards and two touchdowns with 101 of those yards and a touchdown going to Chase via his six catches. Over the next two games, Chase cemented his importance catching three more touchdowns, making Jamar the youngest player in NFL history to catch four touchdowns in their first three career games. Thanks to those impressive numbers, Chase earned the NFL's first Rookie of the Month for the 2021 season. Fast forward to their unfortunately memorable overtime thriller versus the Green Bay Packers in week five. The matchup was highlighted on the Bengals side from Burrow's stat line of 281 yards in a two to two touchdown to interception ratio. And Jamar is representing six catches for 159 yards in one of those touchdowns that Burrow had thrown. 
which was a 70 yard bomb to Chase himself during the matchup. That wouldn't be the end of Chase's 70 plus yard touchdowns though. Thanks to him following up the performance next week against the Ravens with an 82 yard touchdown in the Bengals 41 to 17 win, earning him a 2021 Pro Bowl selection. Yet he still did not match the feat of Burrow's 37 for 46 passing on a career high 525 yards while throwing for four touchdowns and no interceptions. Fast forward to likely Burrow and Chase's most important matchup of their young careers, their week 17 bout against the Kansas City Chiefs. To keep things in context, the Kansas City Chiefs are coming off two back-to-back -back Super Bowl appearances as well as three straight AFC Championship appearances, including one Super Bowl win. I mean, you guys know, but these guys are the real deal. And on each account, the LSU dynamic duo showed up big with Burrow throwing for a remarkable 446 yards, four touchdowns, and zero picks in the 34-31 defeat of the defending AFC champion Chiefs, likely outdueling the best quarterback in the league. This performance by Chase not only placed him in the air of elite wide receivers in his rookie season, but also served as the Bengals franchise record and an NFL rookie record. This confirmed the Bengals' playoff berth and clinched them as the AFC North winners for the first time since 2015. The duo would come out to close the season with remarkable numbers, including Burrow's 4,611 yards in the air and 34 touchdowns in his 16 games played. And just one more note before we move into the Bengals' postseason, Chase's 26 yards in his Week 18 matchup versus the Browns made him the single most prolific rookie wide receiver in terms of yards receiving, surpassing his former LSU teammates record shattering year in 2020. Overall, Chase finished with numbers of 81 catches for 1,455 yards and 13 receiving touchdowns, which ranked fourth and third in the NFL respectively for catches and yards. Now, like I said, let's segue into the Bengals wildcard matchup in 2021 versus the just eked in Las Vegas Raiders. In Burrow and Chase's playoff debut, they would both have impressive outings as Burrow threw for 244 yards and two touchdowns en route to the 26-19 victory, while Chase caught nine passes for 116 yards. This advanced the young Bengals into the divisional playoff round where since he would face the number one seeded Titans in order to advance into the AFC Conference Championship. This would be the game where the Bengals championship aspirations would become all too real as the Bengals defeated Tennessee 19-16 behind Burrow's 348 yards, 109 of which went to chase over 5 receptions. And after the instant classic game which was the Bills vs Chiefs divisional matchup, the Bengals would move on to face the playoff Titans, but not the actual Titans which they just beat, the playoff Titans, which is known as Patrick Mahomes' Chiefs. Similar to their week 17 matchup, this was also likely the single most important game of these two young guys' careers thus far. And if these two have shown us anything so far, it was that they'd be ready come game time in Arrowhead. And boy were they. As Burrow threw for 250 yards, two touchdowns, an interception, and most importantly, led the Bengals to an 18 point comeback to win the game 27 to 24. Jamar was notably quiet during the game, which has much to do with the Chiefs game plan of not letting the sole Burrow to Chase connection to beat them. Regardless, he still racked up a formidable 54 yards and a touchdown on 6 catches in the bout. While this was the single most monumental win of these two young stars careers, it's not crazy to say that this was the Bengals Super Bowl in a way, and these young guys weren't prepared for the mildly quick turnaround to face the NFC champion Rams in 2 weeks time. Regardless, this was a call for celebration as the win marked the Bengals' first time in the Super Bowl since the 1988 team, a full 32-year wait. Heading into the championship game, many parties still favored the Rams in the matchup, but this wasn't a big deal for Burrow and Chase. Since the beginning of both of these guys' life, they've been doubted. Whether it be from Burrow sitting the bench for three years at Ohio State or Chase having to deal with Coach Miles trying to change his position to DB for speed concerns, these two thrive on proving the doubters wrong. So, heading into Super Bowl Sunday, the plan was just that. The main concern for Cincy was their struggling O-line and how it would not be able to hold up against the ferocious Rams front seven that consisted the likes of Aaron Donald, Leonard Floyd, Ron Miller, and more. 
and right out the gate, the problem was glaring, leading to an early lead for the Rams. It wasn't until Stafford decided to put the ball in harm's way, as he usually inevitably does, by throwing a pick at the end of the second quarter, Burrow and the Bengals were able to ride this momentum into the second half, resulting in a bomb of a touchdown to T. Higgins, making the score 20 to 13 Bengals lead. And unfortunately for the inexperienced Bengals squad, they allowed a game-winning drive from the Rams' two-minute drill to give up a lead and make the score 23-20. Chase, while admittedly not a huge factor in the game, being responsible for 89 yards on five catches and no TDs, was itching for an opportunity to put the game away for Cincy as the clock continued to tick. And in the final play of the Bengals' comeback opportunity, their biggest problem and the Rams' biggest strength came to light in the biggest of ways as burrow was slung down after a pocket collapse game over the once top of the world lsu tiger duo now faced the other side of victory defeat even after a remarkable year from the young bengal duo many nfl fans relegated the position the Bengals found themselves in come january to simply luck They've ascribed their win against the Chiefs to the exhausting Bills matchup they played beforehand. Many said the only reason they made the playoffs is because Lamar got injured, and so on and so forth. So yet again, Burrow and Chase found themselves in an all too familiar position of overcoming doubt. And 13 weeks into the season, they've answered the call, as we should expect from the duo by now, which just feels crazy to utter about guys that are so young. Burrow has led his injury-riddled squad to an 8-4 record in a stout AFC North division, posting 3,445 yards and a 25-8 touchdown to interception ratio through his first 12 games played, which is probably the most impressive part, that he hasn't been injured. As for Jamar, he definitely has suffered with some difficult injuries this season, most notably with his hip in the Week 6 bout, which sidelined him for 6 more weeks. Even so, Chase still pulled down 702 yards and six touchdowns in his time spent this season, with three games over 125 yards receiving, resulting in an average of 88 yards per game in games played this season. It's not a give me that they'll reach the Super Bowl, hell, even make the playoffs. But if I learned anything watching these two young guys ball out for these past few years, I'm putting my money on them and I'm doubling down. What do you guys think about the young dynamic duo up in Cincinnati? Overrated in a fluke? Or maybe the next coming of Joe Montana and Jerry Rice? Although, it's more likely it falls somewhere in the middle. Whatever it is, let me know down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps my channel, helps me get discovered. And this video has been made by Underdog. Peace.